Well, thank you, Rebecca. First time I've met this amazing woman <laughs> in this amazing museum that uh, probably is the greatest museum on the planet but, uh, in terms of its uh, understanding of creativity. But I, I want to talk a little bit about what I've been doing for the last uh, number of years. And my basic message, and I'll end with my start with my conclusion, we're not going to change the health system unless we change the food system. I, my expertise is actually in healthcare and health systems. Uh, and uh, we're undergoing a dramatic change right now, both in the healthcare and in, in food. Uh, Seth, uh, did he leave? Made a good point. You know, America has one of the worst healthcare systems, even though a small percentage of people do get some of the best care in the world. Johns Hopkins is a great hospital, but very few people actually can get access to it. Um, and, we, and a lot of the, the disease and chronic illness we have is un, underpinned by the nutrition. Uh, most um, chronic disease is nutritionally based. And, uh, and we're exporting a lot of the industrial food that is actually started here <laughs> to the rest of the world. So this problem is actually getting worse. The statistics are not good. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about how I've been thinking about this problem, because it's, it's a big problem and it requires uh, a different perspective and a, and a, a, a thinking process that... Uh, so let me talk a little bit about design. I, as I said, I trained as a social worker. I worked in that field for 10 years and then became an architect. Very different world, but I sort of fused those two together uh, around the word design. And design, uh, it's been around for centuries, but it's, it's becoming even a more important practice in terms of it's not just doing buildings and products, but also looking at system change. And, and, and what's interesting about design is it requires you to think big, broad, horizontally, not just vertically, deep. It requires uh, understanding complex needs of, from an individual to a, a neighborhood to global populations so, and synthesizing those needs. It also is, is an integrating uh, process. You, you've got to bring these uh, perspectives together and then you come out with a new solution. Now for buildings, we've been visualizing them uh, for, uh, for centuries, but now we're visualizing systems, which is very exciting because of all the data and the, and the ability to take that data and, and turn it into new understandings of systems. And, and in the design process uh, really is changing in the sense that typically in a lot of the art that we see here is, is beautifully imagined by our brains, it's intuitive, but with all the information we have today, we have to take, take a step back and think about how do we use this information and what is the problem we're trying to solve before we actually come up with a solution. So this whole process of thinking and understanding the big picture before you, you zoom in on a solution. And that takes longer, it's harder, but it's part of what's going on now in research uh, across all fields. Oops. Um, and this process requires trial and error. You, you try one idea, you try a first solution, you go back, you, you gather information, you talk to the stakeholders, and you try another one. And you unpack the problem to get a, a better sense of what will work, and also that you have evidence that what you may be trying to do may work, which is also a key part of where we're going with design. Uh, <clears throat> a few years ago, I, I did a project on child obesity where I learned about the f food system. I didn't know anything about it other than going to wonderful restaurants like in Philadelphia. At the, I've been to your restaurant, it's <laughs> an amazing place. But, uh, but this is a kind of a, a, a graphic just showing you how you have to think about a food system, that it has many different scales. And it, again, it goes from a family, a city, a state, and then there's these larger scales, and you have to somehow work with all these scales, and, and then horizontally, there are many different kinds of innovations, and how do you all pull them together, and where do you do it? Well, you do it in, in a creative, uh, collaboration in a lab or uh, in the kinds of projects that I've been trying to put together. Uh, I'm going to move on. So <clears throat> one activity I started at MIT uh, with an exciting group of people from all disciplines was looking at the uh, collaborative design of the future health systems, new models for health. Uh, we looked at 
an acute uh, health system, which is stroke. It's uh, you know, a very important disease, which we actually have solutions for, uh, but there's still problems. Then obviously the more chronic condition like childhood obesity, uh, and I'll go back to that. And then I just finished up a project with the Department of Defense, the United States Marine and Navy, looking at their behavioral health system. This is a 10-year project. It, we started after the war and we helped actually redesign how they treat and diagnose uh, PTSD uh, with the military. What well, was in the Childhood Obesity Project that I really got, came to this conclusion, and I actually, we started off looking at uh, <clears throat> a lot of the research on obesity, uh, and it's, what's dramatic is how much this problem has increased in the last 20, 20 years, 30 years. Uh, bad news, it's not going down, it's still going up, there's been some a slight uh, a change, but uh, it's actually spreading around the world, and uh, and part of it is going back to sort of place and where you live. This was some of the research that was done, and looking at it, I just want to read some of the this this slide shows the correlation between areas of healthy food access. Oops, sorry. Uh, and chronic disease prevalence in urban areas. The dark red on the left are areas of high obesity prevalence, and the dark blue on the right are areas of low healthy food access. So you have it like in, in, in large disparities we see sometimes adjacent neighborhoods. East Harlem has an obesity rate of over 30%, where the Upper East Side, a couple blocks away, 96th Street, has an obesity rate of 9%. And this is uh, images from Chicago and actually in, in, in in Brooklyn, similar kinds of uh, disparities. Um, this is again looking at a regional food system. Uh, this was a, a, a land planning map that was done uh, looking at the uh, radius of 100 to 200 miles outside of New York City that uh, basically uh, right now most of the food coming into New York City, it's about 80 percent is imported, but we, we did analysis of the arable land in and outside of New York, and we came up with the conclusion you could grow uh, enough food to feed, feed New York City. Um, there's enough land, uh, and, and, but again, the systems are not in place actually to do that, and particularly on the production side. Um, again, this pulling these different elements together uh, and understanding that if you don't understand the relationship of these two, and this this discussion about how things are linked has gotten even more important that you need to link these different types of elements to get to this integrated food system that we need to get that will actually have some potential impact on our healthcare system. Get another a graphic just showing these relationships. Again, uh, unfortunately, a lot of our industries, particularly the food industry, the human is not at the center of their, uh, of their design process. And uh, nor is the animal. Uh, and, uh, and same thing in healthcare. A lot of what we see in healthcare today is not patient centric. Uh, it's, it's focused on the hospital or the doctor or that part of the industry. So that, even that primary shift has to be made. So integrating these different sectors, if you will, uh, we need to understand how does the, any sector inhibit the success of another? And then how can we redesign and reintegrate them so they all flourish together? And this, again, is, is aided today by the fact that we have so much information, so much data, and if we ask the right questions, we are beginning to see ways to have systems change. Again, looking at a food system, uh, Judy would appreciate this, but there's all these elements need to be included. Uh, some of this can be done on the private side, but some also needs the, the support of government and, and, and local communities to help develop some of these uh, linkages between these different elements. Recently, we had a, a convening in, uh, up at Stone Barns in uh, New York State where I brought about 40 people together to look at the Northeast food system. And out of that, a number of projects and efforts, including businesses, have emerged to how to bring pieces together. Uh, one of this on the bottom, which I helped co-found, is One Health Agriculture, which is a new company that's looking at bringing some of the benefits of the healthcare industry 
to animal welfare. And there's a lot of technologies that actually cause animal health. The food FS6 is a, 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 a food system accelerator that I co-founded out in California uh, with, with uh, colleagues. And then Food Crunch is another group I, I helped co-found that's bringing the resources to investors and entrepreneurs. I feel one of the great resources in our society today are entrepreneurs to change the food system. I think a lot of the work, uh, the creative work, is going on right now, as like in Seth's work and others, is this extraordinary uh, passion to actually get to a healthcare system through food. Uh, we still have a long ways to go, but I think uh, we're seeing some uh, significant changes in the last 10 years, and I think uh, we need to keep going and, and keep struggling to understand the system at large and its relationship of the parts to the whole. Thank you very much. And before you go, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, what, didn't you speak also at, at that wonderful conference um, in, in uh, New York at the United Nations Plaza about how we came to make California our 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 primary food producing place and and what the wasn't that the discussion on your plan uh, panel that how that <clears throat> kind of came about after the war we mean um, well we I think California is is in a lot of ways the center of healthy food production in our in our country it's where most of the vegetables and fruits and almonds uh, over 70 percent of is grown in California not just for the United States but around the world um, but I think, uh, I'm not sure what the The point. transport prob problem, I think they were. Yeah, yeah, so th this thing of moving the, uh, food around and getting it to the right place at the, at the right price is still a major challenge. And I think, particularly between rural areas and uh, uh, urban areas. And what's ironic about California, you have enormous uh, food movement on the, on, the, on the shoreline along the coast, but when you go into the Central Valley, um, is some of the worst health conditions, even though a lot of the industrial foods produce. Uh, the water is undrinkable for a lot of the children there. The soil has been uh, polluted. Um, even if you're having a, a large-scale organic farm, the winds blow the pesticides onto your farm. So this, this, to all our efforts to try to change even at those scales, there, there's still there are massive disconnects across even states and important states like California. Uh, that being said, there's enormous progress being made. And uh, Judy's point that people need to work together. Uh, mm -hmm. you, government needs to work together. The uh, industry and academia can be a, a great resource in researching some of these outcomes that can be developed from these projects.